Danny to the show. Um, yeah, we've got some B-roll already, but like, <coughs> just quickly have a look around. Scope the site out, at yeah. At this uh, ridiculous house. Um, this ridiculous house, what we're knocking over. Which is going to be knocked down entirely, which is mental. So the current house, 4,800 square foot. Um, it's an original house sat on a bigger plot back in the day. Uh, but we're knocking it down, you see why, when we go out the back, because it's where it's situated. Now, it's situated where it's at back in from the day, because half the front of this site you will see later is in a torrential floodplain. Yeah. So, obviously, what they've done, the old boys back in the day when they were building this bad boy, they raised the land, backfilled a load of stuff in here, sat this where it was, so that the torrential floodplain weren't interrupted, essentially. Mm -hmm. But you'll see why we're knocking it down, it's got, it's got nothing to the rear. When you walk out here, uh -oh. it's right on the boundary. And obviously a house of this nature shouldn't be sat where it's at. It's sighted. Oh my ter God. <laughs> yeah, this is it. So you're right on the public footpath, um, which was sold on as a separate piece of land. And yeah, it's got nothing to entertain to the rear. I suppose, do you need it though, when it's so private? <clears throat> well, the, the problem front is- The front garden isn't like, you're not going to be sat there in your front garden well, with people overlooking you, are you? I'll tell you where we got to while we're knocking it down. Now, Lucy and Peter, the clients, <laughs> approached me to extend the property, improve it. Now, you can see it's had several extensions over the years, all of which are just rooms upon rooms upon rooms. Is that we don't live like that today. It's mismatched. So for me to go and throw, like to get to where we need to be, they're going to spend 1.5 million pounds and still not have what they really want. Wow. Um, so was the, the solution to it was, should we recite the dwelling and build something you do want? To, to, to tart this up and to do what it was going to do to it, it's, it's just going to be an engineer's nightmare. Just seems mental. But yeah, it's an engineer's... So well, we, were talk, we were talking about this on the way in terms of like, would you do this, could, could this be a strategy for an investor? Like, a, of course, well... Put you it think, do you think something of this magnitude could be? Well, the site itself... Are they the thinking itself, about that or are they just like, no, so money this, on money, don't really no, care too this is, much? This, this, is, this is their dream home, dream yeah. location. So they brought the site, as you can see, based on its location and it's just surrounded by nature. Like, there's no overlooking, there's no privacy issues. There's no one anywhere. There's nothing, you can't hear nothing. The thing is, it's just the house is in the wrong, wrong position. Um, it's been made to look like, you can see the original house, the width of it. Mm. So everything beyond the width of that house and there, is all extra. Yeah. So when we started doing, we did a feasibility study, which we do of all clients, to get to the point where we're like, look, your money's gonna be best spent building something you actually want. Mm. Now for them, it wouldn't be something they would do if it weren't their family, it's gonna be their forever home. This is gonna be their forever home. Um, so where's the new one gonna be? The new one's gonna be sighted a bit, bit more forward. The front of it will be where the little pond is here, yeah. the little water feature, that'll be the front of the property. And then the garage turn out onto that side, which is, I think I sent you the 3D in the WhatsApp, but I'll send you some, yeah. proper, some, proper, yeah, we'll get it up. some proper images of it. And how far back would that then go? So then that would then return 14 metres to here. So the back of the house would be where the front is. Ah. So they then get a bit of privacy rear garden. Not that they need it, but a house for where it's at, it needs something. It needs something. Sure, Especially we're going to have, so, we're gonna have yeah. a swimming pool out the back. Oh. With a secluded garden. And then obviously they have all the house facing this. So it's trying to get the house and how we designed it, so that you take all of this in. Yeah. You know, at the moment, it doesn't, if you stand in there, it's just loads of little windows. It's got terrible light. So what, in terms of design and stuff, what are they going for? Because I was, again, I was saying to Dean, it's weird in these <clears throat> more expensive areas that they're a bit more loose on the kind of modern planning and kind of doing what you want because you're not impacting well, believe street, it or not, so street we, views, we, have got, we have got some restrictions here. So the restrictions being that this is a green belt site, 100% green belt. Um, and when I tell you that, okay, which means, well, you ha you have problems in terms of bigger expanding, making bigger floor space, especially when it for a new build. Now, extending that house, it's far easier application than going for a new build. The benefits we have of going for a new build, we can demonstrate that the area is secluded. Um, we can add bigger footprint, but also making the, the property more sustainable. Mm -hmm. um, which, in any application of that nature, full a full consent. We in have terms to of and correct. Yeah. yeah. So we'd have to we'd have to demonstrate that it meets all modern standards, but excels that as well. And luckily, the clients are willing to do that. So that's you know 
more energy efficient, more sustainable. They want to get to a point where they're like 90% off grid. Oh, wow. So um, there's going to be a hell of a lot of solar. There's going to be likely air source or ground source, depending on what the M&E consultants come up with. But yeah, that's the benefit. We're, all, we're going to be doubling the size of this property. So there's going to be 100% increase or 125% increase on what's here. Wow. Um, so we're up to about just shy of 10,000 square foot. The existing property is 4,800. Two floors again? Three floors. Three floors. Three floors. And, um, and in terms of design, is it going to be like a modern version? So or it's, going to be, for... it's going to be it's going to be a twist of modern and mock Jordan. Um, Switching it around there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so it's going to be a, a mock Georgian and a bit. Uh, there's a modern twist on it. Ah. Um, so like like neo Georgian, I suppose is, okay. is the best way of describing it. But so again, I was explaining to Dean about like your saying that you always say like I don't put square boxes on houses. No, don't do square boxes on houses. It's it's not that I'd, I won't extend anything, but it's pushing the, the, the boundaries of planning. I don't like just traditional build. Um, so if we can do something modern or add a contemporary twist on something, that's what I prefer to do. A bit more interesting, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. Do you play around with materials much? Jack, or is it more use, design than anything? Well, listen, it, design's led by, you, th you have a client brief, right? So in any, in any circumstance or any design, the first thing I'd say to a client is, is what their brief is. Now, sometimes their brief doesn't match <laughs> their budget should we say mm -hmm. but you've got to get to it people think that i go, I go for, for the budget because i just want to spend all of their money yeah it, it doesn't and, and look most practices would do that most practices do want to get to a point where they go well let's stretch as much as we possibly can that budget but actually it's what you you're going to get for the footprint of your budget so yeah it really depends on what their brief is now the, the client's brief here is very clear and in terms of where I was going to be going, we already done a feasibility study at the start, which basically enabled us to work on a square footprint rate of today's market for the type of dwelling they want to get. And then that allows me to then build the brief out and actually work out, does your brief match your budget? Mm -hmm. And then once I get to that point, we can then design something. And then finishes are then led by that yeah. as well. So there's a, there's a, do we do a block building and render it because that would be a cheaper form of a neo Georgian, or do we do a block building, clad it in stone? That is again led by the budget. But we play around with materials all the time, you know, from metal finishes, brickwork. I, I, I love traditional brickwork form, that's what I like, um, but it can't always be what I like. Yeah. So, in any design feasibility stage, we say to clients, we introduce them into the Pinterest board, which we have at Design Work Studios, and then pick something you like so pick pick stuff you you're interested in not just from in terms of facade that's just what it looks like from the exterior but also interior stuff because actually if if they're sending me exterior shots what don't have double height entrances but then on the inside they're sending me double height. yeah 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 it's sort of like you've got to get you pick between the two but yeah that's the first port of call for us is that feasibility process is so, so key to get into a point where we know the client's budget and then then the budget and the brief sort of reflect that are the same if not, we, we, I'm, I'm candid. I say to me, what you want and where your, bu your budget is are totally different. You're not going to be able to achieve that brief with your budget. Because you, you can't, uh, at this level, you can't really like pretend, can you? You no. know, in like a well, buy-to-let no. scenario, you can, you can use cheap material and make Correct. it look really nice yeah. and then get, it, get the value up. Whereas this, like, you're going to know. Yeah, exactly. It's gonna, you're going to get caught out. You're going to get caught out. And, and it's important the clients know that from day dot. So. The feasibility stage, we get a QS, we'll look at that and then budget out the build to a point where we know, right, that's the build element. Now this allows us to finish. Um, and then it's done. Th then that finish is where you can then start dictating and really going down and flushing out the design. So in this one, we are, it's going to be a block building cladded in stone, um, which is obviously the more expensive um, procedure in terms of construction, but they have the budget to do it. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, then we play around with detailing. So it, it, you, what you don't see from applications is you don't normally see the detail in anything you do. So it's it's when we get down to the final stage two set of our drawings where you that that detail will come in. And again, it'd be led by budget. Yeah. It will be led by budget. It's mad. So you do the planning as well as the works on this one. Yeah, we're, on this one we're going to run so the. So you'll we're demolish, running, we're, we're demolish it, rebuild it, construct it, the whole lot. So we take the project from just not just the concept into planning, and handing over, snagging, handing over, um, warranties, everything. 
Happy want to days. control the whole process. You had questions about this, didn't you? Yeah. <clears throat> so with the whole planning application part, mm. so you wouldn't necessarily go for anything crazy without knowing what you're going to get to do, right? So, so essentially here, when we do, when I say feasibility, feasibility really is us delving into the policy of planning. So, first get the site. We then, we then obviously get a brief from the client. So it's important before we go into any feasibility stages, what that brief reflects in terms of what they're going to get in terms of floor plan. Now it was it was pretty quick knowing the clients and what they wanted to achieve that it was going to be circa 8,000 square foot. Um, and then it was down to us really to delve into the planning policies and work out whether we're in a greenbelt site, flood floodplain, we've got all these trees, all of this like original nature here. Trees are a problem, aren't they? Oh yeah, they're f f bloody fantastic <laughs> items, they are. I was going to um, say, we're planning as well, you have to keep some of the original, original features, probably like you can't cut down that tree. <clears> so the nature of this site is it's- TPOs. It's a, yeah, it's a, standard, it's a standard site. There ain't no, there's, there is, there is, there's an ancient oak there, um, which is obviously got a TPO strapped towards it. Um, and then there is some TPOs on the site. Now, to overcome them issues, obviously, when we did the feasibility, we understand where we're going to position the property, what trees are going to likely have to go, circa these two here, um, and understand that within that, building into any planning application, what consultants were going to be required. So I'm assuming this one shouldn't be too bad because it's not a just an empty field no, that, where you're no. going to get the like nesting <coughs> birds Correct. and all that other shite. It's like a lived on property, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so. you can see the historical value of the, the nature around it and the trees. Like, yeah, and you, you wouldn't want to get like, <coughs> you wouldn't want to cut down those No, it, that, and it, all trees. Fits into, yeah. it all fits into this design is is being able to see, see it. Like you don't, from where you're at now, the house, you don't see it. Do you know what I mean? You've got to stand in the conservatory before you can actually um, appreciate it. So yeah, there is there is a process in planning um, and when I knew that it was circa 8,000, I, I, can, I can work with the policies and now I'm going to get to that. So I'm a bit retarded. Sorry, TPO, what is that? Tree preservation order. Okay. So there's, there's certain trees... I was waiting for him to actually answer it. <laughs> 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 uh, tree preservation order. So there's certain trees allocated in local authorities what are registered as TPOs. Now you get some people who can register them privately. They're just an annoyance and they're normally neighbours. But... Um, and you get like the more standardised TPOs, which are stuff like that. That ancient oak there, that's probably 250, 300 years old. Um, that would just have one slap to it just because of the nature of its species but and the age of it. Yeah. <clears throat> and that is like a no-go zone. To go anywhere near that, 12 times the bowl. So if that bowl's two metres, 12 times that, 24 metres, you can't build in that zone. Wow. So that has a restriction on the plot. Um, and believe it or not, the client was like, oh, that's so far away. I was like, it actually isn't. No. When I start designing, that, that really does come into play. Like, I'm assuming sort of, they do that because the roots of the tree are so well, that's, that's what embedded, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and obviously, you don't want to be building something new, killing that off. No. It's going to go See, down. See, some, some things in planning, most of it seems like it's, it's just annoying, but you understand that. Yeah, stuff, exactly. Don't yeah, you? yeah. There, there is, listen, there's, a, there is, there's parts of planning which baffle me even today. But stuff like that and when it comes to heritage you understand like yeah um but even ecology it's important in this site because you can imagine the amount of nature that's going to be on it you've got foxes you've got badgers you've got newts you've got bats all have to be assessed under a walkover assessment in order to support any application right. and actually I think I've got all of the bats <laughs> what, what my last like? two houses <laughs> have been invested with bats but, following me back. Yeah, well, so ecology. You not have to do anything with them. No, ecology is massive when it comes to bats, um, and we have to we, we have to embrace it. Um, in in architecture, we've got to design stuff like bat voids in the roof. Oh so yeah, got, isn't that some yeah, bricks and stuff? Tiles, tiles. And you can get a bit of the yeah, bees. Yeah, there's bee, yeah. bee bricks you can there's, get. Yeah, and stuff so like that. you've got to embrace it, and you've got to, you've got to, you've got to naturally just accept that that's you're going to have to do that, especially on a new build. They're going mm. to have to put bat tiles on these mad so you're gonna have a brand new house knowing that there's bats living in all your squeaking avoid. and shitting around yeah, everywhere yeah, yeah but um so like numbers on this thing so do you know <coughs> what this was bought for do you know what mate i actually don't um they brought it in 2012 i will get the numbers and i'll, yeah, I'll, I'll get them over to you um your build here is going to be about 3.5 million professional fees about a hundred grand <laughs> <laughs> passed Sorry, out 3.5 
million. And they bought it in 2012. 2012. No, but that's the build cost. That's just the build cost. The, 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 the purchase price of this would have been over two, I should imagine. Yeah. I will find out from them because we're going to do a stack on it. So, and then you've got, <clears throat> so the build is three and a half, and is that inclusive of? That, that's that's everything. Planning and everything. That's, so, so your professional, you've got three point five million in there, and there's about a hundred grand of professional fees. So that would be architectural fees, planning fees, any external consultants, engineers. Um, yeah, it's 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 the list goes on. And then the architectural fees we've brought into our project fee because DWS makes sense project. You're doing the whole thing, correct? Right? Yeah, yeah. So. And then in terms of like garden. Is that all in? That's there's a landscaping cost in there of about two hundred grand. I was going to say because a lot of people forget the cost of gardens, don't they? I don't oh, think mate, anyone well, budgets them in to work. The, pro really. the, problem, the problem is, in most most clients, they're either stretched to where they have the luxury they have the budget, but no one thinks that gardening is, is a big part of any cost. And in, when it comes to groundworks, you want to have at least thirty percent of that. To mm. do your garden, but we're up, we're up to about we're going to be about two hundred fifty grades worth of landscape in there. Yeah, because where the site it, it? where the site's going to be situated is going to be all raised. Yeah, so it's going to be like a retaining wall similar to this. Um, nice. And then the, all the rear has never been landscaped, so that's yeah. all that's all starting from scratch. Yeah, essentially. Um, and then what do you what do you estimate it will be worth in the end? I would have said this site here is going to be in the region of about eight million quid. Um, so there's fucking loads of money in there. Um, <clears throat> not, that I'd, not that I'd want to have a 75% mortgage there, that no, money. <laughs> no. um, the, the, the nature of sites like this, though, the, the problem you have is there ain't really a number. You, yeah. can, get, you can say to yourself, oh, it's going to be, like, valuations-wise, six, between six and eight million, but it's whatever someone wants to pay for it. That's yeah. what you get down to. Yeah. Like, I've had and in this clients, area, you've got them all the time, haven't you? Yeah, like, you know, you've got, got, you've got people going, well, I'll just, I'll give 10 million quid for that. I'll have that, just to put someone else out the bid. Yeah. Like, it's whatever someone really wants to pay for it. Um, but no, as investments, they don't they don't make big investment choices because obviously the amount of money was got to be laid yeah. out. and the you time. Know, the time, you've got to buy something like this. At, it's not going to be cheap to buy. And then obviously your bill's expensive. Now there's a lovely pot of cash at the end of it if, the, if this client's not going to sell. That it's a forever own, but as an investment piece, yeah, it's there. It's just you've got to tie a lot of money up in yeah. order to do it. I mean, it still sits on your asset sheet, though, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, of course it like, does. Yeah, of course it does. Which is mad to have almost double if you've got fifty percent equity in it. Um, yeah, it's it's something which more people should invest in, but it's it's, it's just scary with big numbers like that. Yeah, of course it, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you start telling people, you know, you're in the green belt. Well, straight away they think they can't do anything. Mm. Uh, you're in a French or floodplain again. Absolutely scares them to death. So it's planning been agreed and done on it. No, we no we've had a we've had a um, a discussion plan in terms of pre-application advice, um, their acceptance of it. Okay. So we've got a list of requirements we need to fulfil, which we already knew when we did the feasibility, um, working in this local authority for God knows how long. Um, so yeah, we were in a position where what we're designing is pliable, but nothing's done until it's done, is it? But I suppose that the nice thing is that you're not under pressure like you would be with an investment, where you're buying no, it to no, get the plan and no. to sell and that, it. You're that, under pressure with correct, time and correct. money. The beauty, the beauty of any of these things is, obviously, once the build starts, the client wants to be in. But um, there is no, there isn't that pressure. Mm. There isn't that pressure in terms of um, the next loan payment or next loan instalment. The client is. We know the timeline we're working to. Fucking we're going to be minted, basically. <laughs> we're going to get to a point where we're probably going to be digging dirt here in August. Yeah. So applications being prepared now. I've got a tree survey being done as we speak. Uh, ecology's been done. Uh, flood stuff's been done from the flood consultant. Yeah, we're in a position where submitting the end of the month. And Decision completion, how long was that going to take to build? Because do, does a thing of this level and quality take longer than something do you know with what? less quality? Or is it, it very much just no. better materials, same stuff? Well, obviously, the bigger it is, the longer the project. This is, this is going to be an 18-month build, okay. start to finish. Um, believe it or not, six months of that would be finishing, just finishing. Yeah. So you're talking 12 months to get you up to a dry structure. It's a lot of spotlights. Yeah. <laughs> And there'd be a lot of feature line in there. Yeah. So um, it finishing would be six months. Nice. And then, but yeah, it's an 18 month project, start to finish. As soon as dirt, when you dig dirt, it'd be 18 months. Um, and that's the, that's the sort of window the client wants to work to. Um, 
So yeah, exactly that. We've got a, it's an 80 month window. It must be fun doing these type of projects though. It is because you've got so much scale. Like there's so much scale to work to. It's and just got, different as well and interesting. Well, you've got swimming pools, wine bars and snooker rooms and it's just yeah it's, it's brilliant isn't it? it's, it's and working with clients of that <clears throat> ilk as well like it's always going to be good to yeah, like deliver yeah. something good to a person who can drop well when you're working with a client what's working to a budget right there's nothing against anyone everyone has a budget when it comes to even lucy and peter there's no unlimited budget but when you're working with someone who's there this is their future home this is this is the, the you know it's nothing beyond this this is it right the budget sort of flexes a little bit in areas they want yeah. to work to. So like, for instance, we was working on a, a 12 metre swimming pool, which is now 17 and a half metre, <laughs> um, because why not? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, um, it's a, it, it, it is, it is exciting. It is an exciting project to work on because you're, you're doing stuff what you don't do every day. Yeah. You know, you're not, it's not, I do work on houses every day, but not necessarily to the, this end all the time. Mm. So. Yes, yeah, it's, it's nice. It's immense. And it's a challenge. It Fair will be play. a challenge. I'm in excited building, to see it at the end. Planning. Oh, it's going to be amazing, mate. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. And we'll we'll get you to document it all of it. Yeah, we'll come back. We'll come back halfway and then at the end, yeah. Get it once it comes out the ground, come back then when we get it out the ground and then and That'd then, be yeah, cool. Have you ever seen a house where it's like <clears throat> the foundations are yeah, not yeah. often though. Yeah. <clears throat> it's really <throat> weird because it doesn't feel that big no. and you and you're like this is a room. And believe then the it, believe it or not, it. that's the hardest bit. Getting a house out of the ground, in, in, or any extension, anything, it's the biggest unforeseen. Now, unforeseen can be a nightmare. Rain, isn't it? Could that well, just, well, just anything, like, anything. Like we always, we, we're going to do due diligence. We're going to be drilling all over this because we, we're going to, and we know where it's going to be sited. We're doing soil samples and, and, and trial holes everywhere because if it's me running the project, I've got to do as much due diligence as possible because that that word unforeseen is just. Uh, um, builders, contractors, yeah. dream word, shall we say. And are you doing the traditional um, foundations or are you doing the piles? It's going to be on a traditional foundation because the existing house, well, the existing house sits on a pad, but we're going to be, we're going to be aiming for traditional um, and there may be areas that have to be piled just because of the, we don't know the soil build up yet. Okay. We're doing trial holes on this next month, actually, uh, end of March. Just again, it's, that's for the neat, for the engineers, and just so we know what sort of foundation we're designing. Hopefully, traditional strip foundation is what I'm aiming for. Um, what a beaut! But no, you can walk the site. It's it's ridiculous. Have a walk about. <clears throat> it's ridiculous. Just don't fall over. <laughs> there's some there's some there's some wobbly stone around here. One hundred percent, not got the insurance for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, public liability, you yeah. haven't got it. No. But you can see the site is it's wet, do you know what I mean? The, the, yeah. the, run, the runoff on this site, you'll see it when you walk down here, we walk the driveway. Um, the runoff is, um, every. if you look at all the land in the distance, everything comes to this site. Look, all the fields around, see in the distance? Yeah, all oh, come, I see what you mean, yeah. So this, this is why this part it's of the like site... like the, the bowl at the bottom. Correct, so this part of the site from here onwards, where in line, I purposely put that spiked statue there what that's can, all influential floodplain what can you do about it nothing there's not a lot look you can build influential so floodplains. Soft. yeah it's soft isn't it so you, you can build influential floodplains but not to the extent you only got to raise the house up incredible amounts and i don't want that to be a restriction in holding up planning now yeah. the further i build into it the more of an issue it's going to be so why the house is limited to where that that is is because it's on the borderline of where that influential floodplain is so that's all. Florential floodplain is very different to a floodplain itself. Florential floodplain is surface water, ah. the runoff of surface water. But it's important not to then plonk a 10,000 square foot house in the middle of it. Is it the sink? <laughs> Correct. Yeah, cool. It's a big old lake, isn't it? So there's that. There's a stream, there's a, the stream runs all the way around this, all the way around the site. <clears throat> and we're going to widen the driveway because it's got a bit of a pinch point up here. I naturally just think of the parties. <clears throat> Oh yeah, you can imagine. You can imagine the parties I have here. That's what <laughs> even Peter and Lucy said it's like they, it's the dream. That's the you know make a proper fun time house, entertaining people. Yeah. You know, you look back at that, and when I pulled up here first time, I was like, what am I going to do to that? <laughs> I was like, that's you know it, it, how it is. It's, it's stunning. Um, but you can see the the original form and all the add-ons to it. Yeah. 
And like you say, it's um, they're, they're little windows for a house that big, aren't they? And oh, like... mate, that, that, them windows start there. When you're up in that room, they're, they're that there. Oh, really? Yeah, that's, it's really, the light is terrible in there. But the driveway, it's just the whole site is just amazing, isn't it? That you can see why you want to do it. Yeah. You know, you've got the you've got the you've got the A30 there. You can't even hear it. Yeah. Yeah, that's nuts. Yeah, it's upset. And you're two minutes away from Ascot Racecourse. Yeah, <laughs> two minutes literally. Um, but yeah, that's that that that's happy days. That's this site. Well, thanks for showing us. Yeah. Lake. It's a lake, over there. lake. Lake there. What stream. Were you hoping for? St stream. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a stream what runs through here. A stream that runs all the way around. I'm good to see that it's not just me that suffers with moss. No, no. Well, this is such wet ground, it's going to get it. But this stream runs all the way. Their boundary, believe it or not, is that stream. That stream kicks in and out, and their boundary follows it. But they've just put a wire fence across just to keep out deers and whatnot. Nuts. Nuts. But yeah, this would be. Any more questions, Dino? Um, huh? That's, a, that's an outlet. That's an outlet of surface water being pumped into it from the pump. <laughs> so you see everywhere. There's all of these manholes because the water from that, oh, the here. surface water, has to then be pumped into the stream as an Ooh. outlet. There is another house. It's a little outbuild, it's a, it's a <coughs> little, ga little, ga little garage outbuilding. As a client, Jack, you say it's good to know that you've just got one person like yourself and just made it. It's easy, isn't it? Like, that's, well, the, that's the idea, and that's why DWS Projects was set yeah. up in order to do that. Um, so that I sort of rebranded the business in an order. I saw a problem in the industry where contractors are harder to find, and then when you did find them, um, the the cost of things are just escalating. Um, we now obviously when we're running a project with a contractor, we can manage that. But in today's world, if you get a builder, like I said, that that dreaded word unforeseen, you should be able to eliminate as much as that as possible by doing just good due diligence. Do you are, are you able to charge more for doing the whole package because of the ease that you give client, or do you give it less because you are managing that entire job? Well, actually, job? in terms of a design fee, it's less. Okay. But in terms of management fee, it's about the same as what it was when I was managing through the architectural business. Yeah. Um, but now it's just more hands-on. So I mean. But in general, I mean, if if a client were to. <clears throat> get a planner and then go and get a builder in and blah 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 is it, it, it generally costs, it costs about 10 percent more in, okay. in total yeah roughly 10 percent more because they're getting the ease well i, I and you're I, doing the running around not them previously i'd get consultants to come out i'd liaise them over the phone i wouldn't meet them in person and tell them the nature of what we're doing other than just sending them a pack of drawings now it's like i meet everyone i walk everyone the site tell them the history of where we're at how many where we got to the design we've got to so it's a little bit more involved but but for the client i mean that's worth every <coughs> yeah exactly like it's, because it's, it's just done it's a, yeah, yeah 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 so they they only speak to me engage with me and i just massage any problems out they don't if there's if there's a point where the only time the client needs to know is if it's going to affect the design or it's going to cost more yeah so otherwise i, I deal with it all I'll yeah, the whole there's a lot to be said, for, especially at this level of clientele as well, isn't it? Where, like, they don't want to be speaking to the brick he doesn't turn up. So, like, so in my architectural business, Design Work Studios, this would be a project where I'd, I'd come in, I'd create all the drawings, get the planning consent, and then I'd get one of my approved contractors to come in to do the build. And we'd tender it out, do all that tender process, and we could help liaise in terms of from a design point of view, but it weren't the nitty gritty of mm. actually. Uh, it weren't the nitty gritty of actually just controlling the project, controlling yeah. the build, controlling the budget, controlling the entirety of it. Now with the Z DWS projects, that's what we're going to be doing. It's everything. So nice. It's a good idea. And I can't imagine there's a million people doing an entire <coughs> rounded business no, of this level. No, you, what and, you... and you're lucky enough that we kind of live where we live because there's not many. Well, a lot of people brand themselves as design and build. Yeah, yeah. Now, I work with loads of design and build contractors um, in my architectural business. Like I said, I'm their, I'm their architect. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's, it's, uh, they're not offering a full design yeah. and build. Now, like, there is. There's obviously loads of companies out there doing it. Um, but to the nature I want to do it, 
Uh, no, probably mm. not. Yeah. <coughs> and is there, is there lots of sites like this? Do you not need them there to be? Because, I mean, I, I, I imagine would, this would probably <clears> be, well, a couple of these a year is going to be maxing so out. So it's max out of four. Four. Won't be more than, there won't be more than four projects of this nature through DWS's, DWS projects. Book. Which again is a nice business model. <coughs> it's like, it's just, well, you deal, can, what, like four clients a year, big <coughs> projects, handle it across the board. It's a lot more stressful than my architectural business. Is it? Believe it or not. The architectural business, you, you know, you're dealing with so many external resources. You can't control planning. You can only you're get, saying this you, is less stressful than the architectural yes, business? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Because I'm controlling the whole process. Like I, stakeholders I, everywhere. You know, like when you when I'm running an architectural business, I'm still expecting a client to do so much. I'm still expecting an external consultant to do so much. Whereas it, and I can control the external consultants and I can control planning to a certain point. But there is elements what are still out your hands, even in this. But when it's this, and I'm the sole point of contact, and everyone's coming through me, I have better control. Yeah. I haven't got to rely on a secondary hand information on anything. So. It's better for me because not only do I get to design, I take it through plan. It's the whole process. The other way, the architectural business is far more complicated and there's more stress. Yeah. Because you're working on different levels of projects, different budgets, and then you're controlling the output of that and the input of that and all the external consultants. Because I have clients where they go, we get the external consultants, which frustrates the shit out of me because I know my consultants are up for the job and I know what they're, they're about. And when I've worked for them, for eight years, I know what their I know what their delivery, what I'm going to get from them. Yeah. When they're going, oh, I'm going to use this one because it was five hundred pound cheaper. I'm like, that's great. You've just saved five hundred pounds. Absolutely. And then the report comes over. And I'm like, oh wow. There's your five hundred. Yeah, there's your five hundred. Yeah. Just gone there. <laughs> um, I'll see it with engineers. Like we work with engineers. What can incorporate into our softwares? We use Revit, which is you're building, drawing, design in 3D client goes oh your engineer you know it was expensive thanks for getting us the quotes because we we still go out and get them quotes we still get you free quotes um but then they go to an engineer an old boy who's drawing with a pen and paper great worked in the day and we'll still work today but for them not to build that into my model is difficult it yeah. just breaks me a job a, a, a more complex job do you not push back on that though? Now you're <coughs> massive eagle. Yeah, so a kite, a kite. <laughs> that was huge. Yeah. Um, um, no, I, I push back on it now. Yeah. More so now because now you're more established. You can kind of go. Yeah, this is our process. Correct. I'll go. You like, have a choice of who you choose, but it comes from a list that I've pre-approved. Yeah, and if you don't, you basically if you don't use our engineer now, we won't we won't take on the the construction technical drawings because. If I'm, I've got an engineer who's working to a model, I can say whether I'm going to have bulkheads, whether there's going to be a drop, whether I need to put, cut, cut timber into the side of the steel, whatever it may be. Um, within the Revit model, it, it's there. Mm. You know, it, it don't lie. I'm not going to get to the side and go, oh, I've got to run the timbers over the top of that. We're going to have a big bulkhead. Yeah. If I can prevent having a bulkhead from day dot and tell the client that, surely that's better, right? Um, it's hard. It's just hard, like anything, I think. <clears throat> it's hard to explain because you can't prove that that is going to go wrong because he's 500 quid, not 1,000 quid. No, you can't. You know what I mean? You can't prove it's definitely going to go wrong. Going it might on... not as well. <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely. But to kind of explain that, like, if you do this, it won't. And yeah. we know they're good. And, like, <clears throat> you're just you're, you're risking it. it. All clients now, it gets to a point where I, I, I'm at a point where we're established that I say, if you don't use this process, which is our process, then we can only take you through planning and then hand you, the, hand you your planning drawings. And then at that point, I take no responsibility of your construction going forward. Surely it makes sense that I'm going to design your construction drawings yeah. as a manual and you're going to use one of my approved contractors, all of my approved consultants. And you, it's just going to be a sweet, trying to tell a client that who's going to pay probably the best part of six, seven, maybe even 10 grand more. It's difficult to, when someone's working to a budget, they yeah. go into, well, I'm saving 10 grand. Yeah. But in terms of you running around, and people don't people don't value their own time. Yeah, I know. You, you know, so even a professional who's an accountant, um, whoever it may be, if they worked out the value of their own time, I'd be saving them money. It's like it's like people who do service accommodation going like going back to that level of stuff. <coughs> you see every one of them setting up the beds themselves <laughs> and doing the cleaning. Look, someone, someone literally came look, up to me and was like, "We're cleaning at the moment because otherwise there's no margin in it." I'm like, "There's no fucking business there." Yeah, of course. Um, Whereas I suppose that's the benefit of having a client at this level because they're not going to 
be arguing you with, with you over 500 no. quid here and there. They still want, they are, they're not going to be stupid and give you whatever you want. No, there's not an unlimited not, budget. Like I said to you, yeah. there's still a budget. We're still working to a budget, but they value their time yeah. and understand that I'm better at this than them. Yeah. You know? So, and that's sometimes it's hard to put, it's, it's hard to get across to people. Mm. It is hard to get across to people. But then I suppose you just don't work with the ones that don't get it. So there's a limitation. So like I could sit there and go, oh, I've got a, you know, I've got a small, a small teams what do 250 and under, um, and I can accommodate that. But those clients take up the same amount of time as the client wants to spend a million pounds. 80 20 principle. It, it's it's the same. Yeah. So. But then you can't. You kind of. You still <clears throat> need them as well, don't yeah, you? Yeah, of course like, you do. Yeah. That bread and butter. Yeah. That bread and butter. You need them for the business. They're important. I'm not saying that we wouldn't do them. It's just that to the nature of where I'm, I want to take this business it's sort of working uh, at a million plus um, because then that allows me to do four projects a year nice um, and then it, if that grows and it becomes a bigger bigger animal it'd be less projects um, yeah well thanks for showing us around no problem mm -hmm.